Hey there, good people. Welcome. So to become a G in these natural hair strengths, I had to start somewhere. There had to be a lot of trial and error and a whole lot of mistakes. So today I'm gonna to share with you 10 of the mistakes I used to make, yes, 10 whole mistakes I used to make. And I'm gonna tell you how I learned to deal with it, how I fixed them. And of course I'll leave links to a bunch of videos below because I've shared solutions as I've gone. So grab your cup of tea or coffee or, you know, adult beverage and let's get into it. Mistake number one will not be a surprise to you all, and that is I did not prioritize cleansing. I, like everyone else, there was a, an era in there where we weren't prioritizing cleansing the hair, especially when it came to wash and goes. Like all people would talk about was keeping the hair moisturized. So they would be like, don't clean with a shampoo, use a conditioner. You gotta keep your hair really wet and then use more conditioner. And the conventional wisdom was that the best way to get a defined result was to use conditioner. Along the way, I've learned that clean hair gives me the best wash and goes, right? Like this wash and go was mad defined and it was time for me to clarify. I finally clarified my hair, you know, spring is over and I clarified my hair. And so I did two clarifying washes and one moisturizing cleansing wash before deep conditioning and styling. And I mean, curls for days. But this also applies to just overall hair care, right? Clean hair takes in moisture. Clean hair will take in your treatment. Clean scalps will prevent a lot of issues. So not prioritizing cleansing was a huge issue. Uh, and I have more information about choosing good cleansers on the channel. So I'll leave them linked below. Next up, another big mistake was not trimming and dusting on a regular basis. There was a point there when I only got trims once a year. So that meant what? A cut, not necessarily a trim. Along the way, the community started talking about dusting, which is when you just go in and anytime you see like a split, you just cut it off, right? I tried that, I got a little scissor happy along the way. So now I'm at that happy medium where I just go to a hairstylist every three to six months and <laughs> get my hair trimmed. It was more before the panoramic, but you know. Panoramic times change everything. But I learned that one, that's the key to easy detangling, right? Like bad ends are a breeding ground for knots. So that was a huge mistake. All the knots I used to have, I used to have so many, now I barely get knots, right? It's one of the reasons is because I keep my hair trimmed. And so if you wanna retain length, like if you want to see that length and you don't want your splits to go up the shaft and you get mid shaft splits and stuff, you got to keep your hair dusted or trimmed uh, or you can get cuts, you know, once or twice a year. But I, that was a huge mistake that I try to caution people against. But I know not everybody agrees on that one. And then another one <laughs> that was really bad was letting my hair dry out between styles, right? So I would wear that style as long as I could, regardless of how dry it got. And that's because when it got drier, I really loved the volume and look of my hair when it was drier. Like I used to do twist outs on dry hair and <laughs> they would feel a hot mess, but they would look really good. And so I wasn't prioritizing moisture, but <laughs> along the way I learned that really if I want easy hair, if I want shorter detangling sessions and just healthy hair overall, I can't, I can't do that. Right. I got to prioritize keeping my hair moisturized. So now my main goal is always to catch my hair before it dries out and go ahead and give it a drench of water, cleansing and conditioning because I found that's the road to easy hair. And then another one on the other spectrum, end of the spectrum is overusing strong proteins. Like everybody used to be into that two-step effigy treatment. And I haven't used that in so many years because unless I like use a really, really strong, like let's say I get my hair bleached, right? or I just do something really damaging to my hair, I don't need a, a collagen treatment that strong. As someone who has, you know, the natural hair coming out of my scalp, really don't need any strong protein treatments. I prefer to use conditioners that have protein in the ingredients. Nine times out of 10, I prefer the ones that don't have protein in the first five ingredients. My low porosity hair just doesn't need it. Um, but you know, I've had color treated hair over the years, so sometimes I've needed more retreatment than others. But I used to just 
pile on the strong protein treatments or like clockwork I was using that um, Afrogy 2 step like every three months and that was really excessive because my hair wasn't getting damaged in that time and so I learned about elasticity treatments and just kind of rearranged my thinking around it learned a lot more but I used to overuse protein especially as a low porosity natural there was just no reason I needed to use that much protein and in the styling realm of things I did not really understand how every style is a wet set and so I would try to style my hair when it wasn't completely wet, right? And I think a lot of that was also necessity, right? Before I got a hooded dryer, my hairstyles would take forever to dry. And since I have a hooded dryer now, I can afford to do my hair on soaking wet hair because I know it will dry like by the morning or like I just know it will dry. But I used to do like my twist outs on like damp hair. I'm sure I have videos. I used to do my twist outs on damp hair. The wash and go, I just stayed away from many years from the wash and go because it was just like my hair will never dry. My technique was bad and everything else. But once I realized that the twist out is a wet set, the braid out is a wet set, the wash and go is a wet set, I, had, I learned the keys to the street. Like I learned how to style my hair in such a way that the style will last for like a whole week, right? Even two weeks because I have a really tight wet set. Um, I am doing a styling masterclass by the end of this month, so there'll be more on that later. But man, learning really how wet my hair needed to be for any hairstyle changed the game as far as like my styling and how long my styles would last. And then another one that I think people love to like stay attached to because it's easy is staying too regimented, right? Like picking a particular regimen and being like every week by clockwork I have to deep condition for an hour every week I have to use this shampoo and every week I have to do this and now I just kind of roll with my hair like whatever I feel like my hair needs I just kind of respond to it if my hair needs nothing then I just prioritize styling like how do I want it to look right that week I'm not as nearly as regimented as I used to be I used to be like gotta do a protein treatment once a month gotta do a clarify no I just kind of run with how my hair is behaving and move on from there. And I think a lot of that came with education. Like I used to do Tip Tuesday here. So I have so many videos where I'm sharing like all I've learned and it kind of reinforced it even for me. And that really helped me learn to just roll with however my hair was feeling and looking at the time. So I don't have to be regimented. I can just do what I want <laughs> based on how I want my hair to look. My hair is an aesthetic instead of something that like really controls my life <laughs> you know and one that i used to really be guilty of and even though now i own a whole lot of products i used to try too many new products at once and along the way i realized that i didn't know how any of my products really worked because i was trying like i would get like a whole new set of products and try all of them at once and be like eh, it's all right not really realizing that i didn't know how any of them worked right and i say this a lot I say when you get new products, try that product with a bunch of products that you know how they work. So then you truly know how this particular product affects your hair. Trying too many products at once is like a recipe for disaster, like, like a recipe for a huge stash of products because you really don't know how any of them work. You just know that you're not getting the style you want or you're not getting the moisture levels or whatever. That's because you're using too many new things at once, right? And I used to be guilty of that by far. Um, that's why I used to have a whole lot more products. Now I just have a lot of products because I try them for you guys or a brand send them to me. But I don't use nearly, like I never do that anymore. Like it takes me a whole month to try new products now because I am trying them with other things that I know work. And then speaking of trying new products, I used to just try the stylers one way and be like it doesn't work. And that would have happened with this. I would say even like the Do Eco Slay, like every time those videos you guys see me saying you know I didn't think I liked this right because the first time I tried them I used it in such a way that the product would not work best and then as I continued to try the product in different ways I figured it out now this thing has all the hold in the world but when I first tried it you guys saw it right if you watch my vlog my May vlog then or maybe it was June I don't know but like the first time I tried this gel or if you look at the review it was it looked like I had done nothing to my hair 
But over the years, I realized that I have to try the products in different ways to see if there's a better way to use it on my hair to get the best result. I always try it the way it's suggested on the package first, but then I take into account my hair, like what I know about my hair and the various ways that I use product. The company cannot account for the way that I use it, right? For user error. And so I try products in different ways to see if I can get them to work even better on my hair. And so that used to be a huge mistake of mine. I would just be like, this doesn't work, right? But now that I know the different ways to try a product, there's really not a product that comes along that I can't figure out how to use it. Just may not want to use it again, but I can figure out how to use it in such a way that my hair still looks good when I use it, which is so clutch. And speaking of using products incorrectly, I used to use plasticizing gels very incorrectly. We're talking about Ampro Olive Oil, the Wetline Extreme, Eco Styler, all those. Like when people talk about their hair being dried out from those products, I used to experience that. And then I realized I need to use a cream under those products. Can't use it by itself. I don't need to use a liquid leave-in. I need to use a cream because I need a barrier between my hair and that really, really strong kind of plasticky hold on my hair. I don't have to stop using the product. Like Wetline Extreme is still the go. It's still that inexpensive gel that is like a fail safe product, no matter your climate. It's like fail safe. But you guys know I have a fail proof wash and go combo. And so many of you have been like, I never thought I could do a wash and go. Now I can. And that gel is wonderful. But if you don't use something under it, your hair is going to feel like crap. <laughs> like it's going to feel like crap. It's, it's going to be terrible. And so I just had to learn that under plasticizing gels, you must use something. You must use a cream or a leave-in of some sort. You cannot use them by themselves because just the, the level of crunch on the hair is somewhat damaging if you handle it wrong or if you don't wash it out properly. And the best way to just avoid that kind of error is to use something under it. And then last but not least, I used to use combs and brushes improperly. Because my mom never knew how to, <laughs> to take care of my hair ever, still don't know. Um, she didn't know how to properly detangle. And so she would just go in and rip down, right? Like that's detangling. You take the comb in and you rip down. I know many <laughs> women can identify or men, like many men and women, like everybody can identify. Um, you just have that, that person who just goes in your hair and like starts ripping your hair out and like you are, and you're like, they're like, you're tender headed or, you know, you ain't got that good hair. And it's just like, no, you just don't know what the hell you're doing. I didn't used to know what I was doing. <laughs> and I do have a video sharing how to properly comb, but I didn't until I started my hair journey, didn't know that I should be using a picking motion with my combs using detangling brushes. I did not know that I should always start with my fingers, right? Otherwise you're going to rip out the hair at the ends of your head. So, you know, there is a learning curve with tools and those are tools. With finger deep there is a learning curve. And so I had to learn proper technique, right? In every area of hair care to really get to the point where I am now where like it ain't nothing but a thing, right? Like I said, it's aesthetics. I do what I want to do with my hair. And that's pretty much it. So that's my 10 biggest mistakes and how I learned to deal with them. Like I said, there will be lots of videos below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, let me know your biggest hair mistake. I really like to know maybe your top three if you don't have one top three um, because I think it's useful. Like there's still so many people starting this journey or they haven't figured out, even though they've been on the journey a long time, what they're doing to make their hair harder for themselves. So help everybody out in the comments. Let me know your biggest hair mistake. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe before you go so we can see each other in the next one.